This is a game of Snake I made that uses the subpixels inside of the pixels on your monitor. It's so small you need a microscope to correctly play it. In fact, the footage you're seeing right now is coming from a cheap microscope I bought online to see if the game would actually work. I was pretty thrilled that it actually did, though I did run into some unexpected subpixel issues which I'll discuss here in a moment. But first, backing up a little bit, you're probably familiar with a pixel. It's the smallest element of a picture. But if you take a macro lens and look at one of the screens you use, you'll see that pixels are actually made up of subpixels, typically red, green, and blue lights. And if you look even closer, you'll see that these subpixels sometimes have sub-subpixels. But for the sake of this video, we're only interested in the subpixels. So pixels typically emit red, green, and blue light. And as we get further away from them, we stop seeing these individual colors and instead see a specific color. This is due to how our eyes work, and most screens can create most of the colors we can see using just these three colors. Now as a software developer, I've been familiar with this for a while since RGB is a common color model, but I'd never actually taken the time to look at a pixel until recently. This past Christmas I got a macro lens, and out of curiosity I started taking pictures of some of the screens in my house. I was surprised to find that not all pixels looked the same. Some were chevron shaped, some were in stripe formations, some had a neat diamond pattern. These different formations are called subpixel geometry. And while I won't go too deep into this topic, I'll link to a neat page in the description that discusses all the different geometries. Anyway, my iMac used an RGB stripe formation and I thought it might be cool to do something related to that. After toying around with a few ideas, I remembered I had this old JavaScript snake game I created 15 years ago. I thought it might be the perfect fit since it's played on a grid. Theoretically, a subpixel conversion seemed pretty straightforward. For gameplay, all I'd need to do is shrink the number of columns, have the snake blocks display a particular color if they were in a particular column, and set the mix blend mode of each block to lighten, so if multiple blocks occupied the same pixel, all of them would show through. For compatibility, I'd need the user to be using a monitor with an RGB stripe subpixel geometry, and I'd need the browser's CSS pixels to line up with the physical pixels on the monitor. I couldn't really do anything about the former, but the latter was pretty easy to solve by simply zooming out, though this zoom out trick only seemed to work on my iMac and not on my iPad. These changes were pretty easy to implement and I was done rather quickly, but I had a problem. Everything worked in theory, but I couldn't actually see the subpixels to see if the game worked as expected. I could have just stopped here and claimed victory, but I decided to get a microscope and check things out just to be sure. And to my surprise, down at the subpixel level, things were not working as expected. As you can see from this first peek into the subpixel world, multiple subpixels were lighting up for the green color. Initially I thought this was a bug, but after triple checking my code, everything seemed fine. Eventually, out of frustration, I decided to see what solid green looked like under the microscope, and to my relief and confusion, in addition to the green light, the red and blue subpixels were also lighting up. I then checked my phone and found that its green color also slightly lit up the red subpixel. This confused me because I had been operating under the assumption that the RGB values and the colors I was using would map to the subpixels, but that clearly wasn't the case. So what's going on here? Well, after many fruitless hours of googling around, I decided to email the person who hosted the neat subpixel geometry page I mentioned earlier, and she responded pretty quickly with an answer that made a lot of sense. Essentially, the sRGB standard was created at a time when screens were less capable and had a narrower color gamut. Today, screens have subpixels that are significantly more capable, and if one were to turn on just the green subpixel, they get a color that's more saturated than the sRGB green. So to accurately display the more desired color of green, some red and possibly blue needs to be added in. I thought this was a pretty neat explanation, and it kind of upended my assumption of how I thought subpixels worked with RGB values. So armed with this new understanding, I went back to the game and switched out the RGB color definitions with LAB color definitions. LAB being a color space that is larger than RGB. This allowed me to isolate the red and green subpixels on my iMac. I think it came out pretty well, but it's also the kind of thing that won't really last into the future. Pixel geometries are shifting away from the RGB stripe, and future subpixels may light up completely differently than they do today. Still, 
I thought it was a fun project worth making a short video on. If you're interested in playing the game, I'll leave a link in the description. I'll also leave a link to the code repo on GitHub. Anyway, that's all for now. Thank you for watching.